Hi, this is Justin Taylor of Range here 2013. Taking a look today at some of our security products. In particular, right now, we're going to take a look at Change Guardian. Very important product. Take a look at what's been happening in your systems. Help us understand that. We've got Eric. How are you doing, Eric? Doing fine, Justin. Good. How are you today? I'm well, thanks. Uh, give me an idea about what Change Guardian is all about. Okay, Change Guardian, at the root of what it's solving problems for, is being able to identify um, who's making changes to systems. It could be file integrity monitoring, critical data to the systems that uh, are housing important information for the company. It answers questions as to who is actually making changes, what changes are made when they're being made, what the before and after values of the changes are, if the changes were authorized or not. So were you pre-approved to make this type of change or access this type of file? Uh, in addition, it can give us more granular information uh, native events can't give you, um, like additional attributes on the event so that the security analyst can come in very quickly and see what happened in the event and how it's related to the business. Is it PCI data? Is it high, uh, uh, very important data around risk management? Is it tied to a SAP application and so forth? So really give you a lot more information. All the information we can give you around the event that's happening uh, that you cannot get from native events from systems. And that's what we'll talk about today. Well, give me an idea of what it looks like. How does this actually work? Sure. And in addition, another thing I want to cover today is, you know, what's new in this tool, as a, in this uh, solution as it was compared to previously. So some of the changes that we made. Um, so one main change that we made is the ability to integrate identity information. So not only is it going to show us, you know, someone read a critical file, but information about who this person is, what's their identity, what's their role in the organization. Should someone from a particular department like sales be reading uh, you know, information about um, employee salaries, for example? It's not just Mac and IP address, but actually this is, Detailed well, in this case, this exactly. is Brad, and this is what he did. Exactly. So we can give you that type of information. Some other things I want to talk about, about what's new is uh, it's similar to now using a back end, same as Sentinel, where rather than re relying on a NetIQ SIM solution as a foundation for Change Guardian, we basically decoupled those so it's a completely standalone product that could be run in independently or with a SIM solution like Sentinel. So, so again, lots of flexibility. Yeah, choose what you want. I can either run it for this purpose or integrate it with Sentinel and get even more value. Exactly. So let's take a look at uh, the solution here. There's, there's really two components. There's a policy editor, which is where you create policy. You define what type of events and activities you want to have pulled into the system. And then there's a, a web-based uh, portal where we can actually search and view the information that's being collected. So first thing I want to show is the policy editor. This is actually information from NetIQ is in the first tab at the top under Windows Templates. So we provide a lot of information for you to get started quickly to start building templates around things like file integrity. Uh, one thing you'll notice, we have also added uh, Unix and Linux support for this that we didn't have before. So any major uh, flavor of Unix or Linux will be supporting for all different types of activities, uh, including file integrity monitoring. But for right now, I'm going to focus on the Windows, and then we'll show some sample events of what uh, maybe uh, GPO changes look like and maybe file integrity monitoring looks like. So for example, under Windows, looking under the Windows templates, I can very easily take a file system type uh, template and actually run that and apply it to my system. And then anything that you see under the Windows templates, that's the out-of-box information we can leverage immediately. But when we customize this information, it's going to be shown under the Windows policies. The Windows policies are my own uh, personal or company policies that we're applying to our systems. Okay, so let me show you one example of how that would be uh, edited. So for example, the file system, I had one created for critical uh, file activity. If I click edit, you'll get an idea of what the, the policy template definition looks like. It's very simple. You give it a name, a description, and it gives you um, basically human readable format of what do you want to be monitoring for. And basically all you have to do is know how to write, uh, read and click on these different things uh, that are highlighted hyperlinks and pick this, the uh, options that you want. For example, I want to monitor for files or directories. Uh, what root path do you want to start with? In this case, I selected the, the C Windows System 32 path. You can manually type in here, or I can click Add and Browse to Location if I want to. It makes it very easy to select the options that we want to be monitoring So it doesn't look for. like there's any coding required for this? Absolutely not. So if you're able to click on the hyperlinks and then choose a, an option or check a box, that's all you need to know to create policy. So point and click, build it visually here. Exactly. And what then kind apply. of files do you want? 
Uh, what attributes do you want to be monitoring for? It's just a, a click and a selection based on a checkbox. So if you can vote, you can write policy. It's <laughs> basically what it comes down to. Additional attributes that we can add in here are, you know, we're filtering out just the important information we want to collect in the environment. So are there certain uh, groups or user accounts we want to exclude from collecting from? We could add that here. We could also add additional things, you know, include only events performed by local users or by administrative type users. So a lot of flexibility in what this actual policy is going to collect. So data instead of from. just collecting all of it and then having to search through it, let's get very specific on what we're looking for. Right, because that's that's what's important, right? You just want to be seeing what's what's out of the normal, what's what you need to be taking action on with all the information that we can give you in a single event. Under the manage events pane, this is where we could add users or pre-approved users or groups saying, okay, we know that they, they're able to make these types of changes to this type of data. So don't alert us necessarily, because this can also do alerting on an unmanaged change. An unmanaged change would be any change that happens outside of you know, the managed events by the specific people or groups that should be making the change. But in addition to that, we, we capture everything, whether it's unmanaged or not, because you might want to go back and, and run a report, a forensic type report, to see all the activity that's happened, unmanaged versus uh, managed and so forth. So all the data will be collected for, for reporting purposes. Under the event context, we could add additional context to the event, again, for the analysts that might be reviewing the event. So you don't have to be a security expert. A uh, junior analyst could pick this up very easy and start creating policy and being able to read the events that are coming in and make sense of them. So you might have information that's, you know, for example, it's tied to a policy like SOX or PCI. So I can add this uh, enhanced information into the event so at a glance I know if it's important or critical to my, to my business. Um, so I'll show you some events that have some of these in there, but you can pretty much add as many or as few as you want. We have some out-of-box uh, field names and field values, but you could add your own. So it's I'm imagining that this kind of stuff is going to probably reduce the amount of time that Absolutely. is going to be taken for and obviously therefore increase the risk and the cost. Absolutely. Exactly. So that's how you would create policy. Basically leverage what NetIQ provides out of the box and customize it to your needs. Uh, we can group multiple policies into what we call policy sets and we can apply those policy sets to groups of uh, machines, for example, servers. Okay. So let's flip over to the, the event viewer, which again, it's basically a uh, web browser view. So this, so this again looks very much like Sentinel. Exactly. So again, what we're using is the same backend Sentinel runs on where we can very quickly deploy a soft appliance into the environment, and within probably less than half an hour, have that up and running and creating policy against it. It's that, very quick to deploy. Yeah, that sounds really quick, especially compared to competitive products out there. Exactly, and that's a couple things we wanted to do is make it easy and quick to implement, and then very easy to use, and very easy to get data out of the system, and understanding what the data means, so you can take a corrective action on that. So just like in, in Sentinel, the search window is available. So by default, we're going to look at any uh, high critical events, severity three to five. I could do a search on that for the last seven days, and I could see that the, some events came in. Now, like in Sentinel, any search that we create, we can very easily come over here and create a report or a filter. I've created a couple of filters that I wanted to show. So I have a filter called GPO was modified. So I can easily click on that. And you could just save these filters because you might want to reuse them in the future. So you come in very quickly to the web portal, click on the, the uh, filter that you want to use, the time frame you want to search in. I'm going to just pick the last seven days and perform a search on that data. And what I'm searching for basically is all the uh, high severity events around GPOs that were modified. It's very important to be able to see you know, if a GPO was modified, who modified it, and what the change of the GPO was. So one thing you'll notice that's different than Sentinel is I've had events with this little shield next to them on the right. That shield is the change guardian uh, event information. So all I have to do is click on the shield. And what it's going to do is pull up all that detailed data around the change to the GPO. All those questions that we're trying to answer in a single event. So I can see a GPO is modified for the default domain policy. It tells me who did it, the J. Smith account from the secure domain. Top level domain name, object, and container. The time the event occurred where it happened, so which server it took place on. Uh, it shows right here that the name of my, uh, this is my policy that I wrote in uh, the policy editor. It shows that this is an unmanaged change because somebody did this that was not pre-approved to make the change. It was successfully performed. And it gives you a delta. It shows you the exact location which in a, within the group policy that the change was made with the before and after value. Well, they basically took a password history change 
and said save you know, 20 passwords instead of 10. So you can very clearly understand what change was made, who did it, when they did it, and what a before and after value change was. So somebody's gone in and, and edited these GPOs, which is obviously can cause major problems in the business. Correct. Instead of me having to search for anything, I can just come in here and change Guardian, look at it, and see exactly what was changed. Exactly. And just on a side note there, we have a enterprise solutions around Active Directory management and delegation along, and also with a group policy. So those tools, as long as we're inside those uh, particular solutions and perform those tasks within the solution, that would be considered a normal, you know, the normal way to do uh, the changes to AD into group policy. But what do you do if someone circumvents that and goes outside of uh, directory uh, resource administrator or GPA? Then you need another tool like Change Guardian to be able to show you that and capture all that information. To find the rogue administration. Yeah, the rogue administration that people might be doing going outside the normal process. Okay? So that was a, an example of group policy change. I also have one I just want to show on file integrity so you can see what that looks like. Again, I'm just going to look for the last seven days. We have some changes in here. And this is really getting into, you know, we, could, we can re report and show you activity as to, you know, people reading files, accessing them, moving them, and so forth. But the file integrity is really about, show me if someone went into a file and made a change to the file with the before and after value. So I have one here. I'm going to click on the shield just to show you what the detailed information looks like. Just like the event before, we're going to tell you everything around who did it, when they did it, where they did it from. Was it authorized or not? It's like I see the J. Smith account. You know, the employee's salary file was changed with notepad.exe. Tells me the host name it was performed on, the policy that was used. It's, again, an unmanaged change that was successful. And here's all that context attributes that you won't get, you know, in any, any other type of auditing so that the, uh, the analyst that's looking at this can determine, you know, how severity is this being changed? Is it related to SOX? Is it high risk? Is it confidential? All that information is available. And again, in the Delta, we're basically just showing you the exact path to the object that we've monitored, and then the content difference with the before and after value. So we'll make it very clearly for you to be able to identify. We'll give you two or three lines above and below the change, and if there were multiple changes, this would just be extended to show you again, very clearly highlighting the before and after change of that value. We'll see that file. maybe her husband gave her a, a raise. Exactly. So another thing that's also come up is uh, people are interested in reporting this stuff. How do I actually get that out? I know Sentinel, we spent a lot of time trying to make that very easy. Right. What does it look like in uh, Change okay. Guardian? So like Sentinel, it's very easy to do, and we also have some reporting templates. So what I'll do, just give you a quick example. I'm going to close out these search searches and open a new one. So again, I'm looking at all my Change Guardian events, severity three to five. Let's go ahead and look at the last seven days, do a search. So again, just like in Sentinel, any search that we do, the search can then become anything. It can be a filter, it can be a report, it can become basically anything you want it to be. And what I'm doing is looking at all my high severity events in the last seven days uh, for Change Guardian. And maybe I want to take all this information and now create a report. You know, maybe, maybe we want to see uh, which type of activities have certain users been doing over the last month, for example. So I'll go over here to the save, uh, icon, and I'll click on Save as Report. So we could give you an event list that just looks like the, the console that you see here where we get a, basically just the event names and what happened. Or you can do a visualization, and we give a, a, provide a lot of different templates that you can select. So I'm just going to say, you know, give me the top Change Guardian 10 events, and I want to go ahead and group that by the user so I can see what specific users are doing in the system. You can give it a, a custom report name if you like. Then you could tell it what time frame you want to report on. I'm going to go ahead and just say I want to report on the previous month. So I'll select that. And one real nice feature NetIQ provides is the ability to preview a report before you save that report to the system. Because I'm, I'm creating a report, but I don't know if the result is what I really want or not. So we have a preview option here. And I can click the preview. It's going to build the report and show me what it would look like if I were to save it. I'm going to go ahead and open up that report. And then what I'm seeing is, again, the Change Guardian top 10 events, the event name, okay, this system, these were particular events that were occurring by the system. On an, each different page, I see events happening from different people. This was the administrator account. This was the activity from the J. Smith account. So this looks good. This is the type of information that I wanted. So then I can go ahead and close that, and I can save my report. Wow, seems really simple. Yes. Again, we're trying to make it easy to deploy and easy to use. That's some of the key things that we 
building it from the ground up with those types of uh, things in mind to make it easy for the end user. Well, hey, thanks a lot for taking a little time to show me what's new in Change Guardian 4. Absolutely. Thanks a lot. Thank you. This has been Justin Taylor for BrainShare 2013.